Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dale Fye, and I am the facilitator for the Access Users Group Eastern Time, which meets every third, uh, the third Friday of every month from 9 a.m. Eastern Time until uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The presenter for our meeting today, David, I'm going to pass control to you. Yes, my name is David Soto. I've been working with IT Impact for about three and a half years now. And um, I don't come from an access background. I come mostly from a web development background uh, in .NET and PHP. And uh, it was an interesting journey on transitioning over to access. But what, what Juan found that, that was my uh, good, good point was that how we can bridge the gap between all of these new technologies that are coming up every day for the web and reaching the gap with uh, what's what we have available in access so what what we have we have done various integrations but for this particular one it's, we're going to demonstrate um demonstrating uh, a google maps integration with access uh, this particular one is for the geocoding and the distance matrix APIs and not so much about the map itself. Uh, that is something that we plan to incorporate later on, but it's not baked in right now in the in the whole package. Why Google Maps? Um, uh, so we know that Google Maps is basically on everyone's phone, so Google always has up-to-date data of everything that's going on. In the, in, in the world, basically. Uh, and uh, it provides the distances. So some of the business problems we want to tackle is that we have uh, distance, uh, distance algorithms available already, but we don't necessarily want to use them because uh, usually we're driving there. And when we use a distance algorithm, we just take the from point to point, uh, taking into account the curve of the Earth. And we don't want that because we, we, we're not driving in a straight line. Uh, we usually have to go around uh, certain places because there's bodies of water and so on and so forth. So we want the business to tell you, hey, it's, it's really five miles, and you have to go around this place and this place uh, to actually be five miles. when it may be three miles or less uh, with a point-to-point -point algorithm. Um, one additional thing that you can do is that you can find uh, location-specific data for businesses with uh, data that is entered by all the millions of Google users uh, around the globe. So, for example, uh, say you want to deliver, you possibly want to deliver to uh, your customer, and uh, your customer has operating hours, so you want to know when they are actually able to receive your your merchandise that you're delivering to them. So you can not only say this is the distance, but you should go between uh, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. just to say so. And let's do a, do a visual example of that. So here it's a, uh, uh, I just picked a random place and I just went, uh, I just went over to Bacardi, uh, the Bacardi uh, factory that's, it's close, it's nearby. Uh, so you see, if we use a, a straight line algorithm, you might get something like this red line here and it would say whatever distance that is. But in reality, we cannot go through that, uh, through that uh, straight line because there's a number of things on the way. So what we really want to do is go around all those things and then get to the Bacardi house. And uh, it's a bit longer, but you don't get you there. Uh, you have an alternative to it. It's the shortest point in a driving distance. So how did I, the, how did we solve that problem? So we use uh, uh, .NET integration to uh, handle every call to Google, and then uh, the results of that uh, 
that call and uh, that post processing. Uh, it's only handled to access as a, uh, as a list of results. Uh, so why why would I use .NET and and not uh, create the XML HTTP call from Access? Well, um, for starters, uh, we have strongly typed things in serialization, so we always know that uh, what ob what is the object and what type of object it is, and we don't have to rely so much on the object super type. So maybe maybe we want to do other things, and it's easier to just handle the two separate calls in uh, in, in .NET, and then just return results. You you're only interested in the results. And uh, another possibility is that you might want to use the portability of .NET Core and uh, share it amongst other platforms. So. It, it's a sort of a write once, run everywhere uh, type of deal that you would get using .NET Core. Just in case you want to move that to the server because uh, it's it's too it's too heavy, or you're having distribution problems, or whatever the case may be, you can just flip the switch and just send it to the server and let the server do the calls. Maybe in a small in a middleware API and then return the results from there. So what do, what do we need to do uh, this integration as cleanly as, and as easily as possible? So uh, we use the bb.net loader by Wayne Phillips. Uh, I checked them last time, and uh, I think he removed, it was open source, but I think he removed uh, the, Page. I'm getting a, a 404 error, so you may have to contact Wayne to get a copy of the of the of the BBA class that led to to um, late binding on the .NET classes. But uh, it was open source at some point. Uh, the other thing that you need is a Google Maps account. You could use a free account uh, if you're just testing, like I am. Uh, but usually, uh, you have to enter the whole deal with the credit card and so on and so forth to get the maximum number of calls and and uh, all the processing cap capabilities. So for this particular uh, example, we're going, just going to use uh, directions, distance, ma distance matrix, and geocoding because uh, there's more things for, for this particular project. That's, that those are the three APIs that need to be activated in your Google project in order for, for it to work. Now we go to the demo. Uh, I'm not sure if you want me to show the access part first or the .NET part first. Uh, let me know what you want to see first. Whatever works for you, David. I'll do, I'll do the .NET first because it's a, it's a the meat and potatoes. So, first of all, uh, the project should be come visible. Uh, you could just uh, there, there was a uh, some time ago there was a, a build command that you had to do, but now uh, you just have to check the register for come interrupt uh, check mark. I don't have a check because I, I, I was doing other types of testing in the project, but you should just check that and uh, you're all done. Uh, everything will register for come uh, into operation. So the next part is uh, you want to have interfaces for all your classes because the interfaces are the ones that are going to uh, communicate with the access, uh, the access uh, project. So, um, I built an interface for my main uh, for my my main class, which is uh, it's aptly called Google Maps. Um, you will see that it has a unique identifier, and uh, it's a dual interface. It can send and receive data, and it's obviously visible because you might have private classes that you don't want visible in access. But uh, 
you can have them internally and not expose it to access just to uh, to helper type of field. So the other thing that every class should have is uh, the display IDs for for every uh, every method that you want exposed into access. Not only method, uh, you can expose properties like this as well. I'm going to show you a couple of things that I'm doing in the actual class. But uh, essentially, this is this is what you this is the meat and potatoes of what you want. You just want to create an interface that will expose only the methods that you want uh, access to. So, okay. So in the actual class, we have in the interface, we have to initialize the interface. One of the things I, uh, I do is that I create multiple constructors, as you can see here, and an initialize uh, method. Why is that? Because sometimes uh, when you're initializing with the bb.net loader, access uh, does not recognize uh, parameters inside the constructor. So what I did was do multiple constructors. Uh, access usually will use the, the plain constructor. And then you call a, an initialize method that says that sets the actual things that you need to set in, in the class in order for it to work. For example, right now uh, here, we just need the API key. Uh, I'm passing this directory for logging purposes, but in reality, we just need the uh, key. So the other methods are the ones that are were exposed at the interface level. And they they are the ones that are actually doing the calls to Google. And th these are the ones that are doing the work. So here we do we can just uh, you can just go uh, over and, uh, and here we call the API and uh, and here um, here we do the the distance uh, we just set the lists here and then we just go we just go over and go to access and we just return the results and on the result um, we just we just return the, the list of address one and address two. Uh, so it's address, I'm comparing address one to address two, and then the distance between the two addresses. So how does that look in access? So in access, I set up a, a simple form that it's just, it just lets you enter one, uh, one address and compare it to addresses I have in, in in that table set uh, in my database. So for example, I have this set of test addresses that I have, it's six addresses in New York. And then with those addresses, um, we can just compare it to this address right here. So how do we achieve that? So close this. So what we do is um, we set up in Access we set a, a a class that sets up the the constructor in the net that I mentioned that parameter less constructor. Um, I named it uh, Maps Controller, and it's it's going to be the host of of everything. Uh, that, that that creates the main class that hosts the main class and sets it and it has an access class by itself. So I called I called the class initialize method in, in access that will just automatically instantiate with bb.net loader and just set the key which is uh, which is my test key and pass pass it on the on, on the logging path which it was mentioned. In the preview section, and I created in the same class. I created a function that uses the this maps uh, initialize maps client, and you just pass up both lists of addresses. In 
in access. So it returns an object, right? Because of, I, I don't want to assume that what you're using in the database and you just have you just have the list and you can just process the, the address results as, as you see fit on your project. So back on the form, I just instantiate that uh, class maps controller that will in turn initialize that, that code. And then uh, you create the rest of the uh, of the classes that contains the, the address objects, which is which are a list of addresses that you you can just set as you can see as you can see here, you can just set uh, the addresses. I'm setting them from the text box, but but you may may want to set them from a record set because you have two sets of addresses that you want to compare. And since both are lists, you can just set uh, you can just map the distance from every point in your database. So the next the next list I have is the destination addresses, which are the ones that I showed in the my example table, and uh, I'm just uh, going through a record set and just adding those uh, adding, adding those uh, address fields that I have stored in my database. I'm just setting them in an object, and I'm storing them in the in, the, in my second list. Then what I do is uh, just I call the when when I have all my objects set up, I call the my access maps controller class and access and and say hey pass this to .net, give me the results of this of this all these addresses, and I just store them in my in a temporary table so I can just loop or do whatever I need to do in my in my project. In this case, I'm just going to show the distance uh, from point to point. But here you here is where you would adapt to your project. And here is where where you will do your customization. So how does that look like and when we actually click on, on it? Look at up an address in New York. Here I'm entering my street address. So this is and the zip code is uh, so when we click the button, all the magic is going to happen, and there we have the distances. So, other thing that I'm doing is that I'm passing database IDs just in case you want to relate the data because you have you have real addresses, and this is addressing your customer needs. So you can just pass IDs around, and I'm just setting the same IDs that I have, uh, as you can see them here. But you, in reality, these would be your your uh, customers, uh, your real uh, database IDs, and uh, that's that's how we do it. I try to make it as simple as possible and as flexible as possible. So there are, are the, there is the least amount of friction when integrating into different sort every sort of different projects, because I know that all projects have different needs, and I try to make it as open as possible while achieving uh, the goal of grabbing all the distances and returning them in a simple format that can, you can just uh, do a loop, and then you can just grab the addresses from that loop and then insert it into the database as how I'm doing, or just uh, display them there, or just uh, pass them through to some other process that you might have. Whatever you need, uh, I'm, that's why I built the back page. So it's a list of addresses with uh, your first address, which should be the the first one, with the with the target addresses, which would be the second. And you get the distances from point to point using Google Maps. David, a question for you. So you let's go back over to uh, your addresses database tab there. Yep. Um, Okay, so these are just a bunch of addresses you plugged in, which theoretically would be like delivery locations that you might want to go to. Right. Um, but are they in over here on your on your maps form? Are they are those showing in that exact same order? Those are, look appear to be showing there in that same order. So this is not really a uh, this isn't a um, 
a best route selection uh, type of thing that you're doing here. It's just it's just computing the distances from each of those from your starting point, 706 Newbridge, Brooklyn, to to item number one, and then from one to two, and then two to three, right? Right, right. Ideally, um, you would want to sort this. Of course, you want to sort this. I just made the demo, so you could just uh, see everything working together. Yeah. But I, ideally, yes, you would want this sorted out uh, from the lowest distance or the largest distance, depending on what your project needs. So the, um, and I've never, like I mentioned uh, to you yesterday, that I had done, I did some work with the Google Maps distance, uh, just the matrix piece in VBA. So I basically did what you've done, um, where I enter two addresses and it gives me a distance. Um, and I I posted out on the chat uh, out on the chat board uh, where that URL is for the uh, the article I wrote on that. But um, what I, I I did not try to actually display that stuff uh, in a map like you kind of like you showed in the in the opening screens. Um, I I also didn't I also didn't do anything that would show the alternate actually show the routes on the map have you played with that at all in between uh you know dot net or access and google well i know that that's a different set of apis you know that i showed uh i showed uh where is it you know that i showed that i picked this uh this particular set right. uh that's that's a different set so for that, I think you want the JavaScript API because the JavaScript API is the one that lets you do things with the map itself. Okay. Okay, that's good to know because I, I I'd like to play with that a little bit. I, you know, I I know that um, when I was playing with uh, when I was playing with it for my client, um, I was just computing the distance between their office and their they were a social services company, and so they went out and did home visits. So I was just doing the, the distance between the office and the home. But in some instances, they were not going back to the office. They were going to another home. Right. And, and, it, and it would have been nice to be able to plug in multiple points um, and, uh, and get the actual best route, uh, just like you would if you were, you know, on using... Uh, Google Maps on your phone or using uh, something like uh, I use Waze on, on my phone when I'm trying to plot routes and that, that type of thing. So I was just wondering whether you had played with that at all uh, in the process as well. I have, but not, not for this particular project. I have for other, uh, I was working other er, elsewhere. Uh, but yeah, I, I know what you're saying. So the idea of when I said that you can plug multiple addresses is that, for example, you can just say uh, what I had in mind in, in the .NET piece was um, you may have uh, you may have want to do it for everybody. For example, so you have uh, you have uh, ten people that are going to do the visit. So who should go to what place and uh, you should compute them all and then assign them uh, based on who's closer to which address. That's, that was the problem I was trying to solve. But you could also do, uh, you could maybe do a cross join between the, the address of the, of, the, of the person that's going to do the visit and uh, all the visits that are uh, scheduled for that day, you can just do a cross join. And then you can just say, uh, this is, you should do this order by picking the top one sorted by distance uh, first. That's another idea. So that's, that's why it's very open-ended because you can do so many things with maps. Uh, it, it, it just depends on the business case. That, I mean, reference your cross join issue, and that, that's what I was thinking that maybe you had done here was was done a cross join and, and did that. But that can get very. I mean, if you're if you're doing very many deliveries, for example, we'll use deliveries as an, as an example. If you're using very many doing very many deliveries, that uh, the cost even at at uh, a penny per call to Google, and I can't remember what the cost is anymore, but it's it's I think it's more than a penny per per call of the API. 
you could very rapidly, I mean, for for six potential uh, sites that you're showing in your screen, you know, you when you talk about cross joins, now you're talking about 36 possible combinations uh, of of sequencing, um, which now all of a sudden, boom, that's 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 36 cents just for that one computation. Um, right. um, now in, the, in, the, in the long run, that's not in the long run. That 36 cents would be easily saved by the amount of uh, travel that you uh, do by ensuring that you've got the shortest di shortest path. But, right. Uh, but it still it still can be cost if you're doing a whole bunch of these every single day. It could be very expensive. Right. Um, well, uh, this is the, uh, remember that this is just the this is just the base case. So let's address pricing first. Uh, pricing is actually very cheap. And I, I think the first 100,000 calls are free. So if you're just doing 36, you should not have any problem. But as we know, businesses tend to scale and not stay the same way. So the problem is when you have uh, thousands upon thousands of addresses that you want to do. But um, what what you do is that you start, you start getting uh, you start caching those calls. So, for example, if you're if you're doing this route every day, instead of, of saving this result to a temporary table, you would save it to a permanent table, and then you just query the ones that you don't have, and then compare against. Uh, you just insert into your permanent table, and then you can just uh, sort and filter with SQL instead of going through, you know, through Google, and you just you just pick your missing pieces instead of everything all the world every time that's that's a that's a great point i hadn't i wasn't thinking about that at the time but yeah that's per, that makes lots of sense because a lot of your a lot of your cases especially with like deliveries um if you're ups or fedex you're obviously you're not using this uh api you're using an in-house version of it but um uh, saving those are you're going to you're going to pick up or deliver to the same place many many times so yeah that does make a lot of sense yeah that that's that's what we're doing with our client right now uh, they have a set they have a set uh, it's like what you mentioned it's like they have visits so the people that you the people that make the visits they're not going to change their address and if you get new customers to visit you just need to add you just need to append those new customers and then plot the new route based on the information what you have and the information that you just got from Google, which should be uh, two, three, uh, I don't know how many clients you're getting, even 50, it doesn't matter because uh, it's it's a, a minimal amount and then you have all the information stored on your end and then you can further uh, go through it afterwards. Yeah, that makes sense. So is this uh, the your .NET um, your .NET class? Um, is that available for for us to to look at? To I mean, obviously, it's got your uh, your Google Maps uh, uh, license co codes in it. But is that something that you can publish for us to look at so that we can incorporate it into our stuff if if need be? I would have to ask uh, one. Yeah, I would I would appreciate that if you would. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, you could just replace it with a variable or something so that we you know put some code in it that says, "Hey, this is what you would do." But you know, give it, ask Juan if, if that's uh, something that we could uh, possibly do. In the meantime, I, you know, my the my VBA my all VBA stuff is out there on Experts Exchange that people could look at and and uh, see how I executed a, a very similar uh, situation uh, about a year or so ago. So. Just, a, right, just a quick question. All right, just a quick question. Uh, just uh, just comparing the two things. Uh, how how did you accomplish? I know that you've mentioned that, but how did, can you speak a bit? Uh, how did you accomplish accomplish the same goal? Uh, it's it's been quite a while. Uh, I just I, I remembered that I had had the article out there that I wrote, so I do not recall exactly how I did it. But there's a the article has a a, a sample database that's got my uh, my ha that has my test codes in it, my you know my Google Maps uh, developer codes in it. So it, it'll let, it'll let you play with it, and you can look at the VBA code to see how I did it uh, on that in that article. Okay, 
I just, you know, I was just curious. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I like the, I like the concept of doing the, the .NET class and using the, the .NET loader uh, for extensibility purposes to make it easy to incorporate it across multiple uh, platforms. But uh, if you're just doing the access uh, thing by alone, th I've got that sample out on the on on Experts Exchange as well. Yeah, it's just a matter of calling the XML lib, which allows you to do any, you know calls to any site that offers a REST API. I've done stuff similar to what you did, Dale, with, um, this is Jim, by the way. Uh, I've done stuff similar to you uh, where I put push pins on a map, you know, in a browser, or I've calculated distances on the fly, or supplied an address and gotten a geolocation code back, a geocode. So, I mean, once you're able to talk to a website, um, whatever method you use, um, it's just a matter of using a different API to do whatever you need to do. On on that note, Jim, uh, would you care to volunteer to talk to to do a demo uh, of the the push pin kind of thing? Because that's one of the things that I've been looking at. I, I've got a client that's a that has oil wells. Um, and you know, my thought was I'd like to be able to to pull up a map of his wells with a like a little you know push pin color coded push uh, push pin uh, to indicate whether those wells are producing or above or below or, or you know whatever that kind of thing. And I haven't really dug into it very much. But if you've got some code that you've used in the past and would like to demo that at some point, give me a you know send me a note and we'll figure out a time and date. I'll ask. <laughs> okay. You know, most most of the development work I do is custom, and right. it actually belongs with the client. Gotcha. So um, if they're not willing to share, you know, I might be able to cobble something else together, but I can't understand. show exactly what I did for them. So. Yeah. No, I understand that. Yep. I got it. Cool. Um, anybody else have any questions for David on on uh, his project? All anyway, right. Uh, appreciate David your uh, support this morning, and uh, and uh, everybody who showed up. I appreciate you, you coming, and uh, we look forward to, to doing this again um, next month. The the date for next month will be third Friday, be the seventeenth of April, uh, zero nine hundred uh, a.m. Eastern time. Uh, look forward to everybody's attendance, and uh, thank you for coming. Thank you.